Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna to talk about the cost of living in Italy. Now, I briefly mentioned this in my last video, something that sort of shocked me coming over here from the States. So today, I thought I would make it a little bit more comprehensive. I created a few lists that we can go over today comparing prices here in Italy to prices back in the US. Now, to keep things simple, I converted everything to US dollar and I convert all the units to Imperial, which is what we use in the States. Without any further ado, let's get to it. Now, after arriving, one of the first things that I got was a local SIM card. Now, I didn't know which one to go with, so I asked a few friends about what mobile carriers they recommended, and someone said, yeah, why don't you try Iliad because they have a pretty cheap rate right now. So I thought, well, how cheap is cheap? Well, I mentioned this in my last video, I'm paying nine euros, 99 cents a month for my plan, which is about 10.50. Now, this is a lot less than what I was paying back in the States. Everybody pays a lot of money in the States for their mobile wireless plan. Regardless of what carrier you use, there are some low cost carriers out there, but what that really means is they give you very little data or very little high speed data or limit things like texting. Um, yeah, it's, it's like a real SIM card plan. I get great coverage everywhere and yeah, it's like 10 bucks a month, so can't beat that. Okay, next thing is a huge issue both here and both here in Europe and back in the States is housing. Now apartments in Italy are much less expensive than they are in Germany. Are they less expensive than New York? Let's find out. So an apartment here, an average apartment here in Torino costs about 550 bucks US. Now this sounds about in line with what I was seeing when I was looking for an apartment here. It, it depends a lot on you know, how big your apartment is and where it's gonna be, but if you wanna live in the city center and you don't need that much room, yeah, five, 600 bucks, you could find a place, no problem. If you wanna live, live a little bit further out, it's gonna be less than that which is, well, yeah, less than half of what you'd be paying in New York for an apartment. Now, this is not New York City. This is upstate New York. This is like an apartment in the city of Albany, which is, you know, I don't know, a few hundred thousand people. It's not a small city, but it's not huge. Next thing you're gonna want if you're living in Europe long-term is health insurance. Now, if you're a resident or a citizen, you can get like a public plan. However, when I first got here, I was neither, so I wanted to get just a private plan. I looked online, filled out a few things, and they quoted me $115 a month for healthcare. Now, that works everywhere, not just Italy. That works all over Europe, all over the world, in fact, in every single country except the United States. Big surprise there. It is shocking how expensive healthcare is in the States and everyone there knows it, they all complain about it, but it's not until you live somewhere else where you can pay a hundred bucks a month for healthcare and actually realize, wow, yeah, totally overpaying, ridiculous. The last thing I'm gonna cover here in this section is sales tax. Now, sales tax is done a little differently here. It's called VAT or value added tax and there's actually different rates. So there's the standard VAT rate that you're gonna pay on you know, most goods and services, and then there are a few reduced rates that I'll talk about in a minute. So the standard VAT rate here in Italy is 22%. So this is a lot higher than the sales tax that you would pay in New York State. New York City is a whole other animal. They charge another city tax, so it's, it's higher in the city. So this was a little surprising when I came here that to see the tax is so high. However, there are these reduced VAT rates for things like foodstuffs. So when you go to the grocery store, you're actually only paying 5%. I kind of like this system a little bit better, I think, because for a lot of stuff, you're paying a lot less, but for certain things, you're definitely be paying more. Okay, speaking about food, let's talk about what you're gonna be spending on groceries. So the first thing let's talk about is one of the staples is milk. Now I had to convert liters to gallons. So I've done all that already for you. A gallon of milk, which you, again, you can't get here. They sell it by a liter is $7.35. So that is a lot higher than New York state. Now here we also produce quite a bit of milk, but I think most of it goes to making cheeses, things like that. So I don't know. I'm not really sure why milk's expensive here, but it is. Milk's also just not very popular as a beverage, I don't think. Um, at least not as popular as it is in the States, you know, unless you're talking about making a cappuccino. 
Anyway, another thing that's not super popular here is bread. And now when I'm talking about bread, I mean like sandwich bread or over here, I think they might call it toast. But you know what I mean, that pre-sliced white fluffy thing. Over here, a loaf of bread is about four bucks, a little over four bucks. So yeah, definitely more expensive than the States. But sandwiches here are not that common. They do have these things called like toasts where it's literally a two pieces of bread and some cheese and meat and it's kind of like smushed together. Not not really a panini, but you know, kind of like this really thin crusty thing. It's, they're okay. But other than that, I don't see a lot of bread around. Moving on, what does a bottle of domestic beer cost? Now, this was also a little bit tricky to figure out because here they sell beer usually by the bottle or in a three pack, which I still find so bizarre, but that's apparently how they do it. Back in the States, you know, you don't really buy a single bottle of beer unless it's one of those big bottles at like the gas stations. The US is usually a six pack or a 12 pack. So what I did was I took a six pack price for the US and a three pack price for uh, Italy and then, you know, did some math and figure out what it is per bottle. So here, a bottle of domestic beer is under a buck, not bad. About the same price as the US, a little bit cheaper. Not terribly surprising because most things seem to be cheaper here. Also, I'm including tax in both of these, so I don't know what the tax is on booze here. I think booze is not taxed nearly as heavily as it is in the US, so that might account for some of the discrepancy. Okay, next thing that is popular here is wine. You see wine all over the place. Not surprising, we are a huge wine producer here in Italy, even in our region of Piemont up here in Northwestern Italy. But yeah, all throughout the country, we produce a lot of wine and also we you know, border areas like France and Germany and they also produce a lot of wine, so you can't charge too much. So is it cheaper in the States? Yeah, come on, it's cheaper. It's about half the price of the state. So again, not terribly surprising. Okay, next up is a drink that's really common here, but probably if you're watching this in the US, you might not know what this is, it's called Aperol. You know, you make an Aperol spritz and you take some of this and sparkling wine, Prosecco. Bottle of Aperol in the States, you can get at any liquor store for $31. Over here, it's only eight bucks. So yeah, I mean, makes sense they make it over here you got to import it there's duties there's tariffs there's transportation but come on that's ridiculous all right last thing i'll cover is a bottle of absolute vodka a little over 13 bucks and yeah again it's a lot less than the states so yeah i think there's just less taxes on booze here in general and maybe they fall under the foodstuffs category so they're only taxed at five percent but still yeah kind of surprising and really nice if you want to save money on the weekly shop you know, I just realized that most of these things on the list are booze. Oh well. On to other things that are bad for you, let's talk about fast food prices. Figured fast food is available both here and back in the States with many of the same brands existing in both markets, so that might be a better comparison. First up is getting an iced coffee from Starbucks. Now here in Turin, we actually do have two, two Starbucks, so I was able to go over and find out that an iced coffee, tall, which is our small, is only about $2.30. And it's, again, what do you know, cheaper than the States. Again, this isn't super surprising. Italy is famous for coffee culture. So there's a cafe around every corner. They can't charge too much money here for coffee, even though the coffee you get at Starbucks is not the same as the coffee you get at a cafe, but still, I guess they, you know, they're kind of cornered in how much they can actually charge. Next up, the all important veggie burrito. If you watch any of my videos, you know I'm obsessed with these things. Anyway, Chipotle. We don't have it here, sadly. But there is a local chain, local, there's there's two in the whole country, that mimics kind of uh, the Chipotle style where it's sort of build your own. You can pick out the ingredients and they'll make a burrito of whatever you want. So there is one in Torino and getting a large burrito here is about mm, a little over nine bucks. And you're gonna be saving like 30% over a Chipotle in the States. Not surprising at all, Chipotle charges you for every single ingredient you want. You want guac, that's extra. You want queso, that's extra. You want this, everything is extra. So a lot of stuff here is just included and yeah, you're gonna be saving money at the burrito shop. Not that burritos are super popular here. I think I'm single-handedly supporting the burrito market in Italy and I'm happy to do it. Okay, next up is Burger King. You want a burger? Well, a veggie burger back in the States, you get the Impossible Whopper. That's gonna cost you about 11 bucks. Here, it's only maybe about nine bucks. So it's definitely cheaper here. 
This is a, this is kind of nice because there's way more price parity here between the meat and the meat alternative veggie solution versus the states where I think they charge you like an extra buck or two just to get the meatless option. So yeah, I don't know, as a vegetarian, I, I appreciate not being gouged. Next up, we got pizza and beer. Now, pizza here is not, I don't think it's really considered a fast food as much as it is in the States, um, but there is a local chain called Rosso Pomodoro, and there's one right around the corner for me, so that, I'm comparing that to in those States, we have uh, another chain called Blaze, which is, you know, the wood-fired, I don't know if they're wood-fired, but they're, you know, they're mini personal pizzas, kind of like what you get over here. So getting a margarita pizza at Rosso Pomodoro in Italy is uh, about 12 bucks including a beer. In the States, it's gonna cost you about $16.50. So yeah, again, pizza and a beer is cheaper here. No big surprise, Italy is famous for pizza. Pizza's all over the place, you can't charge too much for it. Last thing I wanna mention, tipping. Now in the US, we're looking about maybe 15% tip, maybe 20. What do you think it is here? Huh, oh, zero. Well, it's not exactly zero. Usually if you go to a restaurant, there's like a one or $2 table charge that they charge each person uh, that's sitting down at your table. And this is kind of like the tip, but yeah, um, it's tipping's just not common here. I've tried to tip at restaurants before and people get very confused as to what I'm doing. I just hand them money and they look at me very confused and hand me the money back. And so after a while, I just stopped tipping because I think it really confuses people. Anyway, moving on to our last topic is transport. Now, the interesting thing about transport here that I noticed right away is I've been here for about four months and I really haven't needed a car pretty much at all. And that's pretty cool. I can just walk everywhere, take the subway, take the train, whatever. So let's see how this compares back to my old lifestyle back in the States. If I wanted to go to New York City from Albany, I would have to take Amtrak. And the same here, if I wanna go from Turin to Milan, where they have a bigger airport and it's a bigger city, they got more stuff going on, I also have to take a train. So let's see how those two compare. That journey here on a high-speed train will cost me $37.80. Now I should say that this is a high-speed train, so it takes one hour to get from here in Turin to Milan versus two hours driving. And the train in the States is just a regular train. It takes three and a half hours to get from Albany to New York City or three hours driving. So it's longer to take the train in the US and expensive. Hmm. Oh well. Next up, what does a subway ticket cost? Now the subway that we have here in Turin is pretty limited. There's only one line. It is new and, and, and very nice, but it doesn't go all over the place. However, we do have an ex expansive tram network and bus network. So you can use that one ticket on any of these things. The closest thing I could find that's comparable would be maybe Boston, because Boston's about the same size as Turin population wise. So let's see how they compare. Subway ticket here is about a buck 75. And yeah, again, a Charlie ticket card is gonna be about 240 per ride. If I try to compare it to Albany, well, we don't have a subway or any trams, but we do have a terrible bus system. So yeah, transportation here is much better. For public options. Now, what about cars? I know you're about to ask that, so let's take a look. Starting with the road tolls. So not all the roads in New York State are tolled, just like not all the roads here in Europe are tolled, but let's look at a couple tolled sections. Let's say every 100 miles, what are you gonna be paying? Well, in the States, we're looking about $18 for 100 miles. Here, we're looking like 12 and change. So it's a little bit cheaper here for tolls, but pretty much there's a lot of tolled roads here, so. I don't know, maybe it's a wash. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about, which has been in the news a lot lately, everyone in the States is freaking out about how expensive fuel prices are. Well, I have some good news for you. They're not expensive as they could be. If you are over in Italy and you wanna get a gallon of gas, it's gonna cost you, oh, $10, $10 a gallon. So yeah, five bucks a gallon gas is not great, but yeah, it could be a lot worse. Now, the fuel taxes here are much higher, obviously, than the States. That's what the difference is. It's not like the actual product is more expensive. This sort of explains why everyone here drives a Fiat Panda and not a pickup truck. And they mostly take the train if they can. Whew, all right, that was a lot to get through. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if there's anything else you wanna see, also, I'd love to hear about that. Do you want me to make another one of these videos comparing Italy to Germany? 
I've been thinking about doing that because yeah, it's the only other place I've spent a lot of time and I'd be curious to see what the difference in prices are. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.